Okay, I can explain. You know stuff. Could be web development, could be engineering, could be design, but whatever it is, to make your project happen, you've got to explain it to somebody else who doesn't know it as well as you, in a way that makes them want to sign a check for it. There's two ways to solve this problem. Way number one is to make the rest of the world way smarter about what you do. And way number two is to get better at explaining things. For obvious reasons, I'm going to talk about option number two. I'm going to explain to you how to explain a technical subject to a non-technical person. Now, if that all sounds a bit meta, don't get worried. It's really very simple. There's a lot of material in here, so I've prepared a PDF of notes and templates that you can use when you're trying to explain something. There is a link in the description to that. Step one, start with the most important thing. You know stuff, and you've probably worked very hard to learn it. And knowing stuff is awesome, but it comes with a curse, literally the curse of knowledge. And the curse of knowledge is, because you're an expert, you know what you're trying to explain, so it becomes more difficult for you to understand the position of someone who doesn't already know it. One way this curse of knowledge will inflict itself on your poor explanation is through the use of jargon or buzzwords or acronyms that everyone that around you knows, but the person you're trying to explain it to doesn't know. I mean, doesn't everybody know what an AMRAP is? It's like RIPRAP or a Z-PAC or a SANPAC, right? Right? I mean, you get all that. I mean, that's... who wouldn't understand that? But the thing is that everybody doesn't know. In fact, most people don't know. Because otherwise, if they knew, you, you wouldn't be the expert. There are a lot of strategies for overcoming the curse of knowledge, but my favorite one is starting with the most important thing. This is almost always a problem that your audience, the person you're trying to explain this to, faces, and it's always a very fundamental thing. The good news is that there aren't that many of these problems to go around. Survival, shelter, status, food, all that stuff. But for business, there's only two. Increasing revenue and decreasing costs. If your explanation isn't immediately clear whether you're doing one of those two things and you're talking to somebody who's higher up in a company, they're going to be upset with you because that's the first thing that they want to know. What ballpark are we playing in here? And why is it important? And why is it better than all the other ways that I could do that? Or at least in the top five. So if you start your explanation with something like, I've found a way to decrease our cost providing this service by 30%, then someone's going to want to sit through and is going to have more energy for the technical bits of your explanation because they, they know what's in it for them. But if you start with, I want to move all our key instances to an EC3 server using an AMRAP, RIPRAP, jack handle sort algorithm that will decrease our sort time by... No. No, 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 you've already lost me. It could be cool, and it's, it's cool to a technical person because you focus on the technology all day long, but I, I'm not grounded in what this explanation is about. The harder you make it for somebody to figure out why your thing is a benefit, the less they're going to like you. Start with one of the most important things and start like this. I'm going to make it easier for people to buy things on our site by cutting our page load speed in half. Step two. Pick a lane. No, pick a form. No matter what you're communicating, there's only six fundamental forms of communication. Story, argument, analogy, instructions, dialogue, and summary. I've arranged them in the handy acronym SADS, so you won't forget. If you combine these forms, you'll get the structure of everything that's ever been written. But for the purposes of explanation, we really only have to worry about two, a story, and an analogy. So what's CarMax? Well, it's like a used car lot without the used car salesman. This is really kind of how the human brain and language works. We, we combine things or we take a thing away to give a word a new sense of meaning. So Netflix, in analogy speak, would be a video store without the store. Amazon Kindle, it's, a, it's an e-reader. That, that, that even makes less sense than email. But it's a bookstore without the books. So your first line of attack should be to try an analogy. Now, you might not think you're very good at coming up with analogies, and you would be wrong. So I've taught several communications and writing classes, well, more than several, really. And in one of those classes, I had an analogy exercise. And there was this one woman, and she said, I'm just terrible at coming up with analogies. So I stopped, 
and I said, how bad are you at coming up with analogies? And then she said, I'm so bad at coming up with analogies, I can't even buy a vowel. Now, is that the world's greatest analogy? No, but it's funny and it's pretty good and it's a good place to start. To be human is to be able to come up with analogies. Sometimes an analogy isn't the best way to go. Sometimes the best way to go is a story. Here's a very simple form you can try for your story. I stole this one from Pixar. Once upon a time, there was a blank. Every day, he, she, it, whoever it is, did whatever. Until one day, and that blank is where your problem goes, because of that, something happened, and you can keep the somethings happening, until finally, we have a resolution. A story can take up a really, really tiny amount of space, like this. And if you look at it, you'll see that all the elements of the story are there. You can get them very quickly from the image and the words. Once upon a time, there was a carpenter. Every day he used a table saw, until one day he wasn't paying attention and the table saw cut off his finger. Because of that, he was too scared to make a living using his table saw until he finally got a saw stop saw and he never worried about his fingers again. You could also tell this story in a problem action result form. This is a second person uh, form of story. And that gives you flashbacks to eighth grade grammar. Don't worry about it. What, all we're saying is that, that the person you're talking to is the character in the story. It can be very, very powerful. Let me give you an example of how this would work for saw stop. If you use a table saw long enough, you're going to make a mistake and you're going to lose a finger. We made a table saw that can sense human flesh and stop immediately so that you can keep your fingers and keep working as a woodworker. And the very next question is, how does it work? Now, you don't want to put too much technical information in there. And if you can make an analogy for how it works, more is the better. But what we've done is we've explained the benefit of it so clearly that even if you indulge in your technical side a little bit too much, people are still going to be in because they, they, we're interested. We know what we're going to get out of it. There are four forms of analogy and two forms of story that generally work very well for explanations. I've included them in templates in the handy PDF, how to explain things to non-technical people that you can find in the description. So step three, write your explanation as fast as you can. Don't try to write a great explanation. This is like trying to fall asleep, right? If you're trying to fall asleep, it becomes really hard to fall asleep. If you're trying to write the world's greatest explanation, it's going to be impossible to get through the first draft. What you want to do is just get something down on paper as quickly as possible. I recommend doing this longhand and as far away from a phone or a computer as possible. Focus is required here. In fact, I sometimes use a timer and I'll set a timer for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So I only focus on the thing that I'm trying to do because my mind is squirrel. So when you get to the end of your explanation, put a period on it and forget about it for at least 24 hours. This is because your brain, it works like a rock polisher, right? So the conscious part of your brain doesn't actually do much work. It likes to flatter itself and think that it does. But most of the work is done by your subconscious. This is why when you sleep on something like a problem, you can come up with an answer. Same exact thing. So when you come back to it, you want to edit it down to the bone. You want to cut out everything you don't need. So your explanation is as short and powerful and as clear as possible. If you want some help with this, I will do videos on this at a later date, but I have a free course called How to Kill a Word. It's a five video course. Each one takes about 10 minutes that will teach you how to edit any message and clarify it. There's also a link to that in the description. It's totally free. I highly recommend it. It will make you instantly a much more powerful writer and communicator. Step four, give it the grandmother test. This seems like it's pretty simple, but it's immensely powerful. Go explain it to somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about. While you're explaining it, I want you to pay attention to two things. One, where you get tripped up in the explanation and it's not clear in your mind. And two, if while you're explaining it, this happens. If they wander at all, they might be polite, they might stifle a yawn, but those are indicators that there's still more work to be done or this explanation could be better. Then you ask them to explain your thing back to you. And if you don't like the explanation you get, or you get the sense they don't understand it, you, you need to go back through the steps again. 
it's usually and don't be too, too discouraged it usually is uh, usually is obvious what they didn't get so sometimes you just go back to step three and rewrite the thing sometimes uh, you'll get a whole new fundamental problem and you can ask ask questions like what based on that explanation if they didn't get it what's the big problem that you think this is going to solve if you have existing customers if you have something somebody who's already bought into your idea the other thing to do is to go capture a case study from them and to ask them what problem you solve for them it's tremendous it's tremendously eye-opening uh, there's a lot of powerful knowledge there and it's it's a great way to get past the curse of knowledge so to recap start with the most important thing it's either increasing revenue or lowering costs step two pick a form analogy or story try both step three write it as fast as you can put it down come back and edit it and step four explain it to somebody who knows nothing about your subject matter like a grandmother all of this information is in a handy PDF that's linked in the description. I highly recommend it if you have to explain something. All this month, I'm going to be talking about this and posting examples of explanation, both in video and rewriting it in word form and giving you lots of great stuff. So if, if this is a thing you have to do or you want to get better at, uh, subscribing is not a bad idea. And, uh, you know, wherever that button is. And uh, you should come back and you should check out some more videos.